so we're starting off with the donuts i should have the measurements on the screen um, but i weighed out everything for the donuts you guys and this is a very important step add your sugar to your yeast and water mixture always try to put the sugar in with the yeast and water mixture to kind of help it along quicker I did a combination of butter shortening and bread flour um, the three ingredients that I thought would really help it with its chewiness because you notice when you bite down into a donut it's light it's airy and chewy as know I, I'm all about the chewiness and also whip your egg inside of the buttermilk you don't want to add the egg just kind of in the bowl when you start mixing you want the egg to be fully incorporated so you don't have just like chunks of eggs and random parts and um, also melt your melt your butter or your shortening obviously so it can be incorporated evenly I would need this for about I would need this donut if you're doing it by hand 10 minutes if you're doing it with a mixer for about five minutes on um, medium speed or the number two speed Do not want this dough to be sticky whatsoever. The dough should not be sticky. It should be nice and firm and give you somewhat of a little bounce back. Um, and then you're just gonna oil your bowl and let it double in size. So I just sit it out on the counter or if you're, you know, wanna do this a day in advance, just let it sit in the fridge. So as soon as it is done rising, and it took about an hour, Actually, I'm lying, about 45 minutes to an hour. I wasn't paying attention because I was doing so many other things, but it was about 45 minutes to an hour. You're gonna roll it out to a half inch thick. Because when you, when you fry it up, you want it to puff up and have that little pocket of air, well not pocket of air, but like, you know, that airy kind of, that airy kind of texture you get from donuts so when it fries it can just kind of like rise while it's cooking and if you roll it too thick it'll just be i feel more dense and then i just use some cookie cutters that i got in culinary school i think i got these in culinary school i remember my culinary bag my baking bag being like fifteen hundred dollars or something like that oh and also this reminds me i want to give a shout out to one of my friends her name is tiana if you guys see her in the comments give her a huge shout out um i went to culinary school with her we both did baking and pastry she's a lot better at baking and pastries than i am um so we were trying to come up with like a donut recipe that would be good so she kind of helped me with that so shout out to her after you guys are all done cutting out your donuts um place them on a rack and then you're gonna cover them and let them rise again and also with the extra dough i um i was gonna roll out more but then i figured you know it's just me and aiden probably gonna be eating these so i just saved the rest i wrapped it up in really good in some plastic wrap and put it in the freezer all right, and for the oil, you guys, I used shortening, but the shortening was um, being very temperamental. So I switched over to vegetable oil. I made sure my oil was at 350. This is an important step, actually, you guys. You did not see me, but I did temp my oil and it has to be a 350 or 360. Any less than that, it'll be too oily, and any more than that, obviously you'll burn them too quick. Um, and so now I'm gonna do a simple icing recipe. Um, 
and I recommend I actually don't know how much this I will say like I did two cups of powdered sugar and obviously you're gonna need more if you're doing more um, and then I just added a little bit of almond milk and you want to add it a little bit at a time I'm using almond milk because that's all I had and um, but normally I would either use heavy cream or milk and then a little bit of vanilla and that is just like the most simple like glaze icing you can do obviously there's a ton of variations feel free to like google icings chocolate whatever fillings you can go all out with your donuts you don't even have to cut holes in your donuts you could just like leave them circular and fill them with any kind of filling you want there's a lots of different variations you guys can do with this so now i'm gonna do the pizza dough and um I'm using the same bowl. I did not rinse it out because it is just dough. It's not dirty or anything. Um, so what I'm doing is I poured, I think I poured three fourths cup of warm water. Has to be warm, you guys. Yeast really thrives in warm water and it can't be too hot. Obviously you'll kill your yeast. Um, so anywhere between, I think it's like 96. I don't know. If you're a baker, leave, leave me the temps down. I think it's like 90, 96 to 110. And then I am going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. Um, you know, I really, instead of uh, water, I really like to use beer. And that's what I would have used if I had it. Because I just feel like it adds more flavor. Um, and then I add salt. And that's more towards the end because I'm so scared that my salt is gonna kill my yeast because salt kills yeast as well. So I try to add it in as soon as the yeast has bloomed, like towards the end, I try to add it after my flour. And then I cover it and let that rise and double in size. You guys know the drill. And right now I'm just gonna make my quick pizza sauce super simple um, like I said list of ingredients should be thrown up on the screen here soon And then I saute it in uh, appears to be a shit ton of oil. Uh, sorry, sorry for my language, guys. Um, I throw my garlic in, obviously, and you only cook your garlic until you can smell it, until it's fragrant. And then throw in my tomatoes. And I do add sugar, not a bunch of sugar, guys. You don't need that much. You just need enough to cut through the acidity and that's it, not like a ton of sugar. All right, so now let's roll out our pizza dough. Um, like I mentioned in the mukbang part of the video, I would have rolled this out. I would have used, I think only half of this. I should have used only half and rolled it out thinner because I like a thin flatbread crust, like a very thin, crunchy uh, flatbread crust. But if you are okay with it being still pretty thin, um, this one is perfect. And then I just kind of roll it out. I'm not very good at, um, you know, working with pizza dough. Even when I had to make flatbread every day, I would roll it out. So I, I suck at that. I par bake it for, I don't know, it's like five minutes. Put the oil on, a 
thin layer of that. Then I put the garlic parsley salt mixture. Garlic salt parsley mixture on top because I really like that stuff. And then I put that delicious sauce. Y'all, it was so good. Like my enthusiasm did not show in the video because I was so like tired. Oh, I gotta get used to filming again, you guys. <laughs> I suck so bad at it now. And then I dumped a bunch of mozzarella on there. And I still, even at the end, I was like, man, I should have put more cheese. Also, you guys, um, I'm gonna bake this pizza. It was, I think, 425 for about 10 more minutes. I just baked it until it was brown on the edges or the cheese started getting brown and bubbly. And I'm going to set that aside because I am going to make the Caesar salad that I am going to be putting on top of that. Okay, and now, okay. <laughs> Like I'm, my voice changed and everything. Like I'm super excited about this because this Caesar dressing was the best Caesar dressing I have ever made hands down. Like it was so vibrant and flavorful and just everything you want out of a Caesar dressing. It had the bite, everything. So if you're gonna make anything from this video, okay, actually I can't even do that because there's so much good stuff out of this video. Just make this Caesar dressing. Trust me, it is super easy. It'll go way quicker than you think. I feel like you guys can trust me on this. It'll go way quicker than you think and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I just made some bomb Caesar dressing. And you see, as I'm adding the oil, you guys, I am dripping it in very slowly. I know I have this sped up, um, two times sped up but in real time I was dripping it in very slowly because this is an emulsion so we're trying to fuse oil and water essentially and so when you do that you have to add in your oil very slowly so that it has a chance um, to latch on to whatever molecules it latches on to um, to create that emulsion like mayonnaise that's basically what mayonnaise is it's oil egg and lemon emulsified together and then towards the end once you start to see it come together you can start adding more and more but um it's super easy don't be intimidated like look at how it starts off very liquidy and then you'll see the progression of it just kind of get thicker and thicker and then it gets lighter and then that's when i add um, after I'm done adding my oil, I add my parm. Then you're gonna add your anchovies that are in oil and salt. Make sure you get that, oiled anchovies. And just add three, if you don't even want, you can even add two, maybe even one, but just add them, you guys, because that is definitely the key. And then look at it, it's all thick and beautiful. And now I'm gonna do my bacon. I guess I don't really need to show you guys all of this, but I just feel like it necessary. You know, I love to show you guys like every aspect of what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just putting my bacon on a baking sheet. I like doing my bacon like this, especially if I have a lot of other things going on. And um, obviously you guys know that I had a crap ton going on in this video. So I just threw my bacon on a bacon sheet. I put it at 325 for about 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, um, just continuously check it because I don't know people's ovens and I don't wanna give you a, a, a false number and your bacon goes up in flames. And it doesn't shrink as much. I noticed that when you put your bacon in the oven, it doesn't shrink as much. All right, so now I'm making this Caesar salad. Super easy, I love Caesar salad. I really wish that in the video I would have conveyed more about how I felt about this Caesar salad because even this was just like, <sighs> I woke up and actually ate it for breakfast this morning. You guys, I ate this Caesar salad for breakfast this morning while I was editing because I was like, oh my God, so good. And I just decided to put it on pizza because 
every time I have pizza, I always want a salad, like a side salad. Same goes for pasta. You guys, I really recommend getting a good Parmesan. I know I didn't say this um, when I did, maybe I'll insert this part, but I really recommend getting a decent Parmesan. And then I just add some croutons. I, I almost made my own croutons, y'all. I almost made my own croutons, but I was like, you know what? No, I'm already making, I already got too much going on. And then I'm just gonna chop up my bacon. Y'all, oh, this was so good this morning. <laughs> salad for breakfast it was bomb and then I dump my Caesar and I have a glove on because I'm gonna mix this by hand and I didn't want to get all of my hands but most importantly is because I want to make sure that my dressing is one incorporated and two if you feel like you don't have enough dressing on something if you mix it by hand and kind of um, smash down the structure of the lettuce or whatever kind of lettuce you're using you can get fully incorporated obviously I added a lot of dressing on here which I didn't need to but all right so here is the pizza and I put the romaine on the pizza when the pizza was um, not hot because you put it on there when it's hot it's obviously going to wilt and you do not want that I'm tired and giddy if you guys can't tell hello I'm checking out leave me some sleep emojis right now if you guys are listening to this all right and now I'm gonna be doing the Philly cheesesteak I have no clue why this is in the middle of the video um, but anyway let's just get to it so I'm gonna be cutting up green bell pepper and onions for you know a traditional Philly cheesesteak vibe actually I let me not say traditional no Philly cheesesteak gears come for me okay I'm just I'm just making egg rolls okay I'm, I'm minding my business um, but I'm gonna dice up some green pepper and onion And for this, you guys normally, you guys know that I normally um, freeze my steak, whatever steak I'm using, and grate it on the uh, mandolin. But today I was too lazy, so I just froze it halfway and then cut it with my knife. Don't really need to walk you through this, but I'm gonna saute the bell peppers and the onions, and then I'm gonna pull it off and then start sauteing my meat. Um, also for this recipe, I would recommend using ground beef. I know that I had, uh, this steak and it was good. It was very good. Like, don't get me wrong, but I feel like you could save money by just getting regular ground beef. Um, uh, because it just, you don't, you don't need this. I be trying to do too much sometimes. I be doing too much sometimes. And you guys notice that if you've watched any of my previous videos, you guys know that I really like to get, um, I really like to cook it at a high heat so that I can get the uh, brown, so I can brown the meat. Because browning your meat adds a shit ton of flavor. And I was actually going to add cheese to this, but since I figured... You know what, I'm making egg rolls. I might as well make a cheese sauce so that I can dip it into and it worked out perfect. You guys, also, I struggled so hard rolling these. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know what the problem was. Like, 
but I noticed towards the end like pulling in the sides and then rolling it was like better and then I just put a little water at the end to seal it And then I rolled them around in some cornstarch to make them more crunchier. You do not have to do this. I was just testing something out. I fried them at 350 until they were going brown. So now we're gonna make the cheese sauce. This was actually one of my favorite parts of the um, video because the cheese sauce came out ridiculously good. And the reason why I'm shocked it came out ridiculously good is because I actually didn't use milk. I used almond milk because like I said earlier, that's all I had. And I was like freaking out, I was like crap, I gotta go get milk. But I was like, no, almond milk should do. As long as your almond milk isn't vanilla or anything flavored, um, it should work. And it turned out freaking perfect. I loved this cheese sauce. I actually um, reheated some for lunch and it, melted like it was so perfect i like nuked it for 30 seconds mixed it around nuked it again and it basically held its shape and that is very difficult for a cheese sauce and i think um the key to that is adding your cheese when the heat is off do not add your cheese while your pan is still on the heat because it will break your sauce you know when you get that grainy very separated cheese it's because you added it when it was too hot. So I like to pull it off, add the cheese, stir it in, stir it in, stir it in. And then when I see it getting a little thick, I add it back to the heat for a little bit and then take it off. Just look at that guys. It just came out so like dreamy and cheesy. Um, I would definitely add, uh, recommend adding a little salt. Um, but add the salt to taste if to add a little bit at a time when you add the salt because cheese is already kind of salty um so now i'm just gonna do my chicken tenders i decided to go with chicken tenders obviously because i was making sliders so i don't need fat pieces of chicken and obviously it's called chicken tenders because it's more tender part of the chicken so what i do is i did two cups of milk and i added two eggs and then i do some cayenne pepper and hot sauce and I just kind of let that sit there for like 30 minutes this wasn't really to marinate it it was just to add a binder um, and kind of flavor it but I wasn't too worried about it like being marinated And I decided to do the double breading method today. I always have problems frying with buttermilk and double breading with buttermilk. Maybe I should try it again soon. Maybe there's just something wrong with me. So I decided to do more of like a thin, like milk and eggs is more thin. So I take it out of the wet, put it into the dry, put it back into the wet and then put it into the dry. And then I make sure to squeeze like I squeeze the crap out of it, like squeeze in the flour. And then I set it on the rack, you see. And another thing I think that helps with breading sticking to your chicken is letting it sit there for a minute. Like just letting the chicken hang out. Um, if you're doing a double breaded method, just to like let it sit so it can like hug onto your chicken. I did not record when I put it in, but so just golden. It was so good. Like I said, I'm, I really missed the mark on an enthusiasm and the mukbang part. Like, 
I was so out of it by the time I, start, I had to sit down and eat. All right, so now I'm making the spicy aioli. Like I mentioned in the video, this is my go-to spicy aioli. I live and die by this stuff, so make it. You'll love it, I promise. and I'm putting it in a squeezy bottle because you guys know I like my squeezy bottles, okay? Trust me, and when you're in the middle of the night, you're looking for munchies, and you're like, oh, you know, and then you see that squeezy bottle of just, just goodness, you're like, yes. I squeeze this on whatever I'm eating. And now I'm just putting it all together. I did Hawaiian rolls, I toasted the whole thing. And I definitely recommend Hawaiian rolls. You guys know I love these. If you watch any of my previous videos, um, they're just amazing. They hold up very well to sandwiches and they're sweet and uh, I love them. They're perfect If you guys are still here leave me I don't know leave me like pizza emojis I am so grateful that you guys are hanging in there with me um, And I'm super just like I don't know I feel super grateful every time I wrap up my voice memo because I know I'm about to edit it and I know it's about to go up soon and I'm super excited to get down in the comments and talk to you guys. So make sure you leave a pizza emoji. Uh, make sure you leave a comment letting me know how you guys like the video, if you guys would do any of this. And uh, let's get into the eating part. And like I said, again, disclaimer, I am like basically so exhausted when I sit down and film this mukbang, but I do want to convey that this was so delicious. And it's gonna take me a little time to get back into the groove of filming but like i said thank you guys for your patience and i will see you guys later oh my god y'all for all my cooks out there you know i am sweating i am hot i got black on i live in arizona yes i do have the ac down but that doesn't matter because the oven is on right next to me it is hot y'all hot but today, as you guys can see, I brought us a feast. I got myself some munchies, okay? The donuts are actually from a subscriber that consistently asks for donuts, for me to make donuts. So I will put that person's name up on the screen. Shout out to you, I think it's Gabby. Shout out to Gabby for requesting the donuts. That's why they're randomly here. And then I have the Philly cheesesteak rolls with some cheese sauce and hopefully it didn't cool down too much because y'all know what happens when cheese sauce cools. Um, and then I got my Better Than Popeye's sliders. Y'all, y'all aren't gonna be able to see, hopefully. These are better than Popeye's. I didn't want to make the sandwich because, I mean, I've made so many chicken sandwiches, you guys, I mean, Whatever. So I decided to make them into a sliders because they are munchies. I'm doing a munchie feast right now. And then I have cheese pizza with Caesar dressing, or not Caesar, Caesar salad on top of it because I was like, I love Caesar. I don't know how much eating I'm going to do today, y'all. Y'all know that uh, every time I make like a big meal or a feast, I cannot eat that much. So let's just dig it, okay? Let's dig it. I want to try this before this cheese cools down. It's not doing too bad, y'all. Y'all. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Make some water. 
to me mm. it's so hot y'all mm. mm. this is bomb Make this, put it on your sandwich. Actually, I'm gonna put some more. Put it on your sandwich, like such. not to I'm actually about to run out of space on my on my um on my camera so I gotta hurry up all right this is the Caesar Caesar flatbread All of my stuff fell off on that one, so let's just let's steal this one. I think next time I want to roll this out thinner. I like a very like thin pizza. I like thin pizza. I mean, this was good, but to um, the voice memo.
Uh, you guys, my camera just cut out because I ran out of room from making this huge ass beast. Can't wait for a new camera. Everything was from fucking scratch. You guys already know how I do. Leave a like below. Comment. Tell me what you think. You guys, I know that if I can do it, you can do it. You don't have to do all of this. But I would definitely recommend trying all of it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to mention this in my voiceover, but definitely use ground beef when you do those. Uh, would d you don't have to, but it would be easier to use ground beef. Tastes the same. Um, and then, oh, I didn't try a donut. Let's try a donut, y'all. Fresh homemade donuts. This is for you, Gabby. And all of the donut enthusiasts. You know who you are. I don't like sweets, y'all, but I can give it this. But I'm very full. So it might take me a minute. Anyway, on that note, you guys, on a donut note, I gotta get together. Y'all take it easy on me, you know? I'm just getting back in the swing of filming, so, you know. These are so nice and airy. Like, I mean, they're chewy. They're so chewy. Alright, y'all. I can't eat no more. Okay, no more, y'all. Uh, I'm ready to take a nap. If you guys like what you saw today, leave a comment, leave a like. If you guys are still here, leave me some donut emojis. There better be some donut emojis. And I can't wait to see y'all in the next video. I'm about to grind it out for y'all. I got some, I got some leftover chicken. I think I'm gonna be making a breakfast sandwich. So uh, stay tuned for that.